Daniel, and I am here to tell you about my transitioning back into the classroom journey. For the past year and a half, I was a curriculum and instruction specialist for a company, and I supported teachers all over the country mainly in the state that I live in and another state. And one thing that I had discovered while being in this position was that I missed the classroom immensely, as well as the travel was just not what was best for me and my family. So I'm super excited to be back in the classroom, but I haven't been in the classroom for a year and a half and um, it's gonna be a process, it's gonna be a journey to transition back into the classroom after being out of it for a little bit. And also for the first time in my career, I am the lead teacher in a second grade classroom. Before, before that, before coming back into the classroom for this position, I had always done either a kindergarten, straight kindergarten self-contained classroom, or a K-1 split. So I have some experience in second grade with just like supporting teachers and coaching them, but this will be my first time being in a second grade classroom because most of my teaching life has been all kindergarten. So I'm, I'm excited though, like this is a new, this is a new challenge for me, a new experience, but there's a lot of things that I'm going to have to be ready for and prepare for that I hadn't had to for kindergarten. Most of my supplies, most of the the materials, the games, the centers, everything has all been for mostly kindergarten and first grade. There are some things that I do have that I will be able to keep and bring into the second grade classroom, especially for students that uh, might be struggling with some foundational skills. But in, a, in some ways it's kind of like starting over. So I am here to share with you my journey, to share with you how I'm getting my classroom together, what it's going to take for me to be successful this year. And also as kind of a reach out too, like if you are an experienced second grade teacher, uh, I all the, the support and ideas and feedback definitely leave a comment to let me know like what are some of the things that I might need to think about as I go into second grade as opposed to kindergarten. Um, I'll take all that kind of feedback, you know. But let me tell you a little bit about my situation, what I'm going into. I'm about ready to transition into a quite a big elementary school. The The second grade team is going to be a section of five second grade classrooms. So I have a lot of support that in that aspect. I'll have lots of colleagues to to bounce ideas off of, maybe utilize some materials or supplies that they have. Because I am starting, I, I did a, when I left the classroom, I did a lot of um, purging, a lot of removing of, uh, removal of items. So, when you, when, in the next part of this video, when you see what I have in my classroom, it's not even close to what I used to have. And again, I'm still needing to get more grade level appropriate materials. I have, the classroom has been newly remodeled. The, all the classrooms are newly remodeled. So a lot of the, the materials and things that you might get from other classrooms, not that I really, it's hard to inherit materials and inherit a classroom from somebody that's left. But sometimes it's nice to be like, oh, I could actually use this or oh, maybe I, I, I don't need this, but I'll save it just in case I need it in the future. With this classroom, there's not a whole lot of that, which again, is, it's fine. Um, but I am really starting from scratch on just like any materials that I have. Um, it's a big classroom. There is a decent amount of storage. There's one big counter that is on the far, far side of the room where the windows are. 
So when we get into the classroom, you'll be able to see what I have, what we have to work with. This morning, we moved in a bunch of the supplies already and uh, some furniture that is my personal furniture. The classroom comes with its own set of furniture, uh, a teaching easel, a rug, um, all the all these different tables that are funny shaped, which I it's gonna be interesting to see how to work that out. Um, also comes, you know, it's got the standard teacher desk. There is this, there's a computer cart in there. And there's also this other cart that has like these plastic bins that slide in, which I think are actually really helpful because the students, since the students don't have desk desks where they can put their materials, all their like, their headphones, their other materials, their, their workbooks and everything can go in this bin. So that's really helpful. I'm very excited that, that we've got that. So yeah, so where, I, where I'm at right now is, is that I am sorting through all the materials that I've left either in the house. And I went through the storage unit yesterday with my wife and we went and pulled out, I have a ton of books, but I need chapter books. So I'm gonna have to go and get chapter books and find some good chapter books for second grade. But as far as like picture books and some of the bigger books, I have ton of those from my classroom library and that's gonna be a whole separate video of me sorting those books. So let me turn you around and you can kind of see the situation going on here. There's not a lot of materials here because most of the stuff that I did have came from the storage unit. But let's come take a look here. This is what was left here in the dining room in our house. And it has, you can see that there's not a whole lot because again, most of the stuff was, most of the stuff was in the storage room. But I, I have young kids that are, one's going into kindergarten and one is in preschool. So I kind of, I've been separating and sorting the materials based on, I think this these things can work well in a, in a second grade classroom, especially for those that are struggling with some basic skills, but also uh, just things that work for a second grade classroom. So I've got like my sentence builders here. It's the box has seen better days. I've got word family builders. I'm kind of debating if I want to keep these or not because again, this is kind of kindergarten-y, first grade-y, but also it might just be something fun for, for kids to just still put together and build some of those more challenging words because they are four-letter word puzzles. And then I have my folder game centers that I use. These are all kindergarten-esque things that I'm going to keep at home for my kids at home. So it's construction paper that we love to do projects at home with the kids. And we've got some word fla family flashcards, some old alphabet flashcards that I use with my kids, some sound letter sound games that I'm gonna be using with my, with my young ones. And then some of my son's old <laughs> math workbooks and then a puzzle. Uh, Hannah, our, uh, our youngest child loves to do puzzles. So that is where we're at right now with just the supplies that are in the house. Um, my floors are still being cleaned right now. So we moved everything in there, set most of the stuff on the counter, and it's pretty much gonna have to stay on the counter until tomorrow because they are in the process of doing my floors, uh, cleaning my floors, and they need it needs to dry overnight. So I can come back in tomorrow to start really moving the rest of the stuff that I haven't moved in yet, as well as put in all the furniture. So that's gonna be, tomorrow is going to be the big time things. Moving in all the furniture, trying to set up and figure out where everything's supposed to go. I don't even know how many students I have yet, but again, since I have so much work to do, I'm in a, in a sense I'm starting over a little bit, I wanna get in there early and I wanna get started right away. So we'll see you in my classroom. So here we are. Here is my classroom. There's my son 
and help here is my big helper and this is my nice big classroom without all the furniture in it it's been completely cleaned been redone some new some new cabinets and shelving looks like it has a decent amount of storage space sadly no bathroom as i was i've been spoiled in my kindergarten career life having a bathroom in every single room I've had except for this one. So this is what I have to work with. This is all my supplies. It's a little bit more than what I had originally thought, but still not a lot. I am lucky enough to have uh, support from my principal to say that I can order uh, a bunch of centers and and literacy and math games that'll help me get back to where I once was. Here's a little bit, here's a little, another little nook over here with some shelves. I have to go through all these shelves to see what's in here. It looks like, oh, nothing. So, got a lot of space, a lot of storage. There are some curriculum things that I need to look through, which are in these cabinets here. And there are some more nice thing is is all the math supplies the math manipulatives that i need are in here so that's good so i i, I have it's a start some bins up here that i can use and more curriculum up there and then some more random supplies in here and some bins and books but not a whole lot as you can see so um, ooh, whiteboards. I didn't even see that before. So there are some things, but it's kind of a little bit like starting over again, which is fine, you know? Sometimes you need to do a reset, and that's going to be good. Now take a look out here. I'm going to show you where all the furniture is. Right here. This is all mine. And to, all the way to over here, a rug that I brought from my old classroom. So the first order of business will be to get all of that furniture that was out in the hallway, put it in here, and sort of start figuring out the layout. I think because I don't have a lot of bulletin board space, there's only four tiny bulletin boards, I think I'm going to have to do some makeshift ones. Brick is not the best <laughs> best uh, place to put makeshift bulletin boards, but I was given some uh, poster putty and some other sticky things. Hopefully I can use that. I've never, I've only done one makeshift bulletin board before and it constantly was falling down. So I'm going to if anybody has any suggestions on how I can keep up makeshift bulletin boards, that would be great. But we're going to get started. Stay, this is day one of classroom setup, and I am ready to start moving in furniture. Come along with us. When we wake, hear the birds and see the sun. Side by side, our fears are done. Oh, the good times just begun Oh, we know what we have, let's hold on tight Whew, so that was fun. I am sweaty. Uh, Zachary was quite the big help. He moved in all the wobbly chairs. He moved in the desk chairs. Um, but I just want to show you what it looks like now because... There's a lot of tables and the tables are kind of interesting looking. I've never seen kids tables look like this. I wouldn't even know what you would describe the shape, but um, it's fun. It's a new challenge, kind of a way to, it's like a puzzle, try and figure out how I can fit them together to make, you know, tables or groups of my students. But everything's in, all the furniture is in, 
And I wanted to show you one thing because I love these. I'm glad I have them. It's a little bulky though, but it's these things right here, these bins. These bins are what I can use for all my students' supplies, their headphones, any uh, where they put their unfinished work will have an unfinished work folder. I, this is, I just really like this. Um, the only complaint that I would have is just that they're kind of big and bulky. So trying to figure out where to put them will be the biggest challenge. But I mean, this room is so big and there's so many different nooks and crannies that I think there'll be a place to put them. But let me show you, let me, let, let me completely show you what it looks like so that you can see what we've got here. So as you can see, there's those big bulky bins. I still love them though. I have a, I'm not sure what this table is for. It's kind of high, but I'm thinking I'm going to lower it and use it as like a uh, information table. Maybe I'll put mailboxes there. Um, maybe I'll put newsletter where I'll put the newsletters, any information that parents need to take home. Um, again, all these funny tables. I brought in my library rug, a bin for my library. I love that rolly cart, although it's a little bit wobbly. I got to figure that out. The teaching easel up there. I have my teaching stand where I can put my document camera and I can roll it with me instead of having to stay in one place. That'd be fun. Uh, my teacher desk. And then another cube shelf. And I love the, the drawers right here and just all my supplies and everything. So really the plan right now is Zachary and I are going to try and figure out the layout. Now that we've got everything in, the first plan is to figure out what to do with these student tables, how to put them together, how to make them into groups. I've got, I, I finally got access to my school's Google Drive and it has some old information about previous second grade classes. And it looks like I'm going to have probably on average of like 22 students, maybe 21, 22, 23. So I'm going to organize these tables in groups of, or organize the tables so that as if I were to have 23 students. 24 max. Here is, I, I, at first I was kind of like, I don't know how I feel about this, but this is my small group table right here, minus this of course, and it is whiteboard. It's a whiteboard table, which at first, I, the shape of it's kind of funny, but I like the whiteboard aspect of it and it is small enough where it is not taking up like a third of the room, like most kidney-shaped tables or the, the U-shaped tables that I've had in the past for small group. So I'm just trying to figure out where I'm gonna put that. I'm thinking small group might be over in the corner over there since my classroom library is gonna be back over here. I want small group to be in a corner somewhere where I have a view of the entire room. And I'm thinking right over here because drawers right there, I can put small group supplies in there. I can put um, my teacher toolbox when I get one right here. I think this would just be a nice area for my small group center, my small group area of the room. So we're gonna get started and we'll see how far we can get. What we're looking for in life, call us crazy but things are finally right with you and i the future is bright Before 
sleep Hear the crickets, see the moon Side by side and through and through No limit to what we can do Oh, we know what we have, let's hold on tight Found what we're looking for in life Was crazy, but things are finally right. Well, so that was fun. I think I have a basic layout of what I want my room to look like. Although there's still a few finicky things that I'm struggling to figure out. Once I got the tables all squared away, it was just a matter of just trying to move them just slightly enough to where I feel like everything fits and I can intentionally circulate around the room when I'm working with students. But the problem is, is every time I slightly moved a group of four, they would all get messed up because the tables are so oddly shaped. So I'm gonna turn things around and I'll have you kind of take a look at what it all looks like. I'm still struggling to figure out where I'm gonna how things are going to look for my teaching area because it's a, it feels a little crowded over there. But let me turn you around and you can see what I'm talking about. So this is the room. As you can see, I put those, uh, those tables into groups of four. I, they're really fun tables. I like them. It just, it makes it very difficult to try and figure like how I want to set up the room and organize the room. I like having groups of four, especially for a lot of what I do in my classroom. It's a lot of uh, student discourse, group discussion, turn and talks. So I wanted to make sure I don't like them in rows. I hate rows. Rows bug me. So I think this is the best sort of situation. They're in groups of four. Zachary was very helpful in making sure all the chairs got put into a space where they where I could see if some a student was sitting there, could I walk through easily enough, which I can. So I like it. I think this is the way that it's going to go. And the way that it's set up right now, I have 25 tables, but I'm not sure what I would do with that extra table right now. It's right here. I don't know what what I'm going to use it for. I think it's going to be moved because right here is going to be where the teaching easel is, where whole group the whole group area is going to be, where Zachary is now currently spinning, playing spin the chair. My desk is here. I don't like that this is kind of in the way of my view if I'm sitting at my desk, but I don't ever sit at my desk. So the only time I do sit at my desk is at planning time or after school. So I don't think that's a big deal. The big, the bigger, the bigger deal is the small group table, which I wanna make sure that I have a clear view of everything. So this is temporarily how it's going to be. I might move it back a little bit. I might move it out a little bit, but if I'm sitting here, I have a full view of the room while I am doing small group work, while I'm doing small group instruction. So I think that this is where it's gonna stay, just especially because this setup right here, these drawers can be all my small group supplies. Um, but that then leads to the question of what happens to this amazing cart, which I really love. But this was originally the plan for this, what I was going to plan for my small group materials, but I don't know what's going, what it's going to be used for right now. I have these two bins right here for my library. I don't love it. I really, like, I'm, I'm trying to figure out, I think chapter books is going to go in one of these, and maybe one of these bins, one of these might be going away, and I might take that extra table and put it back there for something. I was thinking 
So this this extra table that I had mentioned before, I I want to use it for some sort of information, either mailboxes or parent handouts. But it's kind of crooked. I'm not sure why it's it's not setting flush. But here is the only my only issue with this, that table is it kind of is right up against student seating. But again. These things, I, I can't think of any other place, any other place to put these things except for right here. I think these are going to have to stay right where they are. <clears throat> so this is the way it looks right now. I'm gonna take a break, have some food, and then, <laughs> yeah, of course I'll have some food. And then I'm gonna do just some more like little things here and there and then call it a day because again I have been moving furniture all afternoon and I'm not used to doing this it's been a year and a half since I've done any of this so I'm a little bit tired but I think it's a good start just a little some extra pieces that I'm still trying to figure out oh and then I put over here I forgot to mention <coughs> my this, the tall teaching stand. This doesn't really, I don't really know where else to put this because I was thinking I, this is probably where my document camera is going to be. But the whole purpose of this was for it to move around. But I, I don't really, there's not really a lot of space now that the, the, the student tables are all put out there's not really a lot of space to move it around so I don't know if I'm going to keep it here and just have the document camera plugged right into the computer or how that's going to work but this is where it's going to stay for now uh, whether I move it later I don't know that's what I mean there's just a few couple little th things here and there that I still want to deal with but it's, good. it's been a very productive first day. Well, I'll take a break and then get back to work just for a little bit longer. Day one is done, it's in the books. And a lot has been done. It doesn't feel like it because like <laughs> nothing is up. You know, all the bulletin boards are still empty um, and the counter is empty again. But the main thing is, is that I have a pretty solid understanding of my layout as you saw a little bit ago and I've pretty much unpacked what little supplies I did have and brought with me. Luckily, um, as I said before, my principal is going to be very helpful with making sure that I can order as many supplies and games and centers and everything as I possibly can. So that's good news. But let me turn, I'll turn the video around again so you can see just exactly the finishing touches for day one and also see what I did in that last little bit of video. So again, here's the room cool. as you're coming in through the front door. Yeah. This is where the bins are still. The desks, the tables I should say, are the same. I've I still don't know about this area yet. I think though, I like this little area right here, just in case somebody needs a, a moment to kind of work on their own, be right by my desk, right by the teaching area. The small group area, I think I really like. I'm not a big fan of wobbly seats. I know that they're helpful for students that uh, that just need to move. 
but it also sometimes to me it feels like it's a little it can be a little bit of a distraction for students uh, then it can be a help but these are what's going to these are the 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 stools the the chairs that we have for the small group area so i need i'm going to take one more wobble seat and put it there so that i can have seven spots here at my small group table which has been filled up with just a bunch of random assorted classroom supplies that i don't know where i'm putting those yet my magnetic letters which i still think i want to use in second grade and i love i i kept these whiteboards that were handed down to me from my second classroom that i ever had and they're very they're magnetic so i can use uh, different magnets for for small group instruction when it comes to like students that are struggling with phonemic awareness, uh, word building, all kinds of different things, dictation. And so this is kind of just like a smorgasbord of stuff that still need to be organized. I have a few more things back here, but what you saw in the last video, what I did is I took all those bags and boxes of my books that I have and I put them here just so I know that this is just this is where the stuff belongs right now because my wife who loves for some reason to organize books is said that she wants to organize my classroom library so if that's what she wants to do I am all for it so those uh those bags of books and boxes of books are all going to stay there for now um I don't know this is this other bin right here is going to be part of the library as well i don't know how i feel about this yet i think i think this is going to actually stay because these are going to be my math tubs and then in here are going to be just other math manipulatives that we might need for during math time so i think i'm going to keep this here because it's probably the best place for it and it just seems to be the best use of that that uh furniture what you saw what also you saw me do was over here what games that i do have that are close to second grade appropriate i put in here so i've got some of my like my long vowel the box got tore up so it's just in this bin now but it's long vowel mats building words with long vowels these are building four letter words with like different combinations can be with with blends or whatever what what have you so i think that's pretty second grade appropriate this one up here build and write word eh, it's a little bit it's pushing it but it still can be helpful for some of those students that need that <coughs> sight words a lot of uh the sight words that are used in second grade are with that and this one, it's word family, so it might not seem like it's second grade appropriate, but it's got all kinds of word families. It's got uh, long vowel digraph word families. It's got all kinds of things. And even then it has some of the short vowels as well. So I think this is that I wanted to keep that. That's very helpful. Uh, some, life, the, some life science folder games, um, math, math facts, ping pong math facts games, which is... You need to know your math facts in second grade. So there will be more that get filled in there as what I've ordered comes in. And then the last thing that you saw Zachary and I do was I was left before the end of my career for the first time. Well, not the end of my career, before the, before the end of my time in, in my classroom before I moved before I sent my changed rules was I was left all these glue sticks because I, I use a lot of glue sticks in my classroom. Even I'll still, I still plan on using them in second grade. I'm gonna do a lot of different projects, project-based activities. And there was boxes and boxes of them, but they were all in packages of two. So Zachary and I uh, opened up those packages, dumped them in here, and then Zachary um, helped recycle the 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 leftover the leftover boxes and so then 
Then down here, I have whiteboards. I brought, I, I had some whiteboards from previous classrooms, but then there's just, I have more whiteboards from, that were left in this classroom as well. So those are gonna live there for now. And then these are some more of the whiteboards also. So this is, this cabinet is going to be definitely worked on throughout the next few days. But this, that's it. That is day one in the books. This area hasn't changed at all, but I, I feel very good about where we're at. Hopefully on day two, we can get even more done, start uh, putting up displays, bulletin boards, and get even more things set up. So we'll see you uh, maybe tomorrow. Maybe it will be Thursday. I don't know.